Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Good morning, Jesus 911. Virgin Most Powerful Radio. My name is Ruben Nava. My partner, Jesse Romero, we make up the team on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, Muscular Christianity. That's right. Good morning, Jesse. How are you doing? I'm doing great, bro, and I'm reporting for duty uh, under the uh, under the kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ, under the queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and in service to the perennial teachings of 2,000 years of Catholic Christianity. Amen, Jesse. Hey, could you tell the, the, the listeners what you're doing um, in terms of uh, promoting the, the Catholic vote for Trump? You know, I, I know that uh, you're going to be off on the road doing some uh, some talks and I, I know we saw the I think it was a church militant that put out something with you giving a uh, like a three minute little um, talk yeah mm-hmm. Ruben I'm just I'm, I'm part of the Trump campaign uh, here in Arizona so um, I'm doing a lot of uh, a lot of work uh, outside of a VMP and outside of my own you know apostolic work mm-hmm. of, of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ I'm I'm going around to different parts of Arizona and giving lectures and trying to basically get the Latino vote and get the Catholic vote. But uh, I don't only go into Catholic churches. I, in fact, I hardly have, I think I've only been to one Catholic church. I get invited to a lot of Mormon churches and I get a lot, invited to a lot of evangelical churches and a lot of RNC gatherings. And I'm trying to give people facts as to why we need to vote for Trump. And I think they're interested because number one, I come, uh, I'm a Catholic and they say you're very, you're very well documented you know politics. You know the scriptures. You give all the evidence. Uh, you give fact-based presentations on why we should vote for President Trump. So, yeah, it, you know it, it's also kind of a PR thing for the Catholic Church because when they see that the Catholic Church has well thought out answers for moral theology, for uh, non-negotiables, for uh, what we would call a hierarchy of truths. You know, Mormons and Protestants will say, man, where do you get all this stuff? I say, well, this is basic Catholic teaching, you know. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've been. I've been. I'll be busy doing that, Ruben, until November 3rd. So I'll be g- gone tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. I'll be zipping around the state of Arizona on a Trump bus on one of the Trump campaign buses. I don't know who's going to come from Washington. I'll find out when I get there tomorrow. But I'll be zipping from one city to another, just giving lectures to Catholic groups and uh, and uh, and people of goodwill. Yeah, it's just uh, you're just showing just how important this this election is, and uh, I I know you uh, you're a solid character, so you're not going to be putting yourself involved in something that wasn't true. So oh, th- no. th- what you're doing is is uh, is absolutely. Ruben, I wear my big Saint Benedict crucifix right outside whenever whenever I go give these, these lectures. People oh. know I make the sign of the cross before I start. I make the sign of the cross when I end. People exactly know where I'm coming from. That's great. Hey Jess, so uh, let's uh, let's start with the uh, Cardinal uh, Archbishop Vigano prayer. Uh, yes, we need it this time. Mm-hmm. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. Almighty and eternal God, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, graciously turn your gaze to us who invoke you with confidence. Bless us, citizens of the United States of America. Grant peace and prosperity to our nation. Illuminate those who govern us so that they may commit themselves to the common good and respect for your holy law. Protect those who, in defending the inviolable. Principles of the natural law and your commandments must face the repeated assaults of the enemy of the human race. Keep in the hearts of your children courage for the truth, love for virtue, and perseverance in the midst of trials. Make our families grow in the example that our Lord has given us, together with his most holy mother in St. Joseph in the home of Nazareth. Give to our fathers and mothers the gift of strength to educate wisely the children with which you have blessed them. Give courage to those who in spiritual combat fight the good fight as soldiers of Christ against the furious forces of the children of darkness. Keep each one of us, O Lord, in your most sacred heart and above all, he whom your providence has placed at the head of our nation. Bless the President of the United States of America so that aware of his responsibility and his duties, he may be a knight of justice, a defender of the oppressed, a firm bulwark against your enemies, and a proud supporter of the children of light. Place the United States of America and the whole world under the mantle of the Queen of Victories, our unconquered leader in battle, the Immaculate Conception. It is thanks to her and through your mercy that the hymn of your praise rises to you. O Lord, from the children whom you have redeemed in the most precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, amen. 
Thanks, Ruben. Good way to start off the show. Ruben, we want to talk about liberalism. Uh, years ago, there was a, a book it's sitting on my shelf. Yeah. It's called Liberalism is a Sin. It was written by two Catholic priests. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're from Spain, as I recall. Uh, Father Don Felix Sarda and Father Salveni. Yeah, priests from Barcelona, Spain. Mm. Uh, they wrote the book back in 1886. And the liberals in the church went after them. And uh, they, liberals in the church, sent that book to Rome and the sacred congregation put that book under the ban for a while. Mm. But uh, in 1887, uh, again, uh, after revisiting the book, the sacred congregation itself uh, removed it from the ban and it was promulgated. And essentially, the Pope at the time said, wow, this is like uh, this is like the best thing ever written in the Catholic Church in terms of explaining exactly. I, I actually think, Ruben, it was the book Infiltration before Infiltration. Mm. Yeah, and so it was removed from the ban after the Sacred Congregation examined the works, and here's what they said. In the first, not only is nothing found contrary to sound doctrine, but its authors, Father Felix Sarada, merits great praise for his exposition and defense of the sound doctrine therein, set forth with solidity, order, and and lucidity, and without personal offense to anyone. In communicating to you this order of the Sacred Congregation of the Index, that you may be able to make it known to the illustrious priests of your diocese, Father Sarda, for his peace of mind, I pray God to grant you all happiness and prosperity and subscribe myself with great respect. It's, that was from Father Jerome Shicheri. Uh, for the sac- secretary of the sacred congregation of the index, so he wrote in behalf of the pope at the time, and that's what we want to talk about, Ruben. The 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 dangers of liberalism. Yeah, Jesse, that that was about the time uh, Pope Leo the Thirteenth was, you know, coming out with his his uh, encyclicals on Freemasonry and and some of the errors that uh, we have to look forward to, and then it just kept coming from Pope, you know, Saint Pius the Tenth and. You know, Pius the Eleventh, and and uh, so it just uh, that's a that's a pretty important um, little uh, book. It's a little it's it's like the size of a tract, right? It's not that big, so it's no, it's not that read. big. It's yeah. an easy read. Yeah, yeah, Ruben. Yeah, but that. this, yeah, this word liberal Christianity. It's it's um, Fulton Sheen even uses this in the seventies. I mean, I'm looking at his book Life Is Worth Living, page three twenty one. Venerable Fulton Sheen says this. Uh, liberal Christianity denies what Jesus Christ meant when he said, depart from me, you curse it into everlasting fire, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. Life is worth living, page 321. So he says, liberal Christianity denies us. In other words, Fulton Sheen in the 70s is saying is that liberal Christianity denies that there's a place in called hell. Mm. So he's already writing that in the 70s. And liberalism, Ruben, it affects everything. Yep. We have Catholic liberalism. We have political liberalism. We have intellectual liberalism in the universities. We have moral liberalism, uh, as you see our society with transgender bathrooms and sex reassignment surgeries and homosexual marriage. As, as Dennis Prager says, he says, liberalism destroys everything it touches. Mm. Absolutely. And um, we're, we're going to get into this article here, um, Jess. Um, it's well written. It's uh, it's what did the title of it is what did Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X say about the uh, uh, quote Alyssa Milano liberals? Uh, that's that uh, B uh, act B actress that uh, that's is always bashing uh, the the Catholic Church and and conservatives. Um, so I don't even think she's uh, relevant anymore, but she thinks she is, and. Um, <laughs> So it just goes. It starts off talking about how black liberationists Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X were two of blacks America's most iconic leaders. Even in death, they are still impacting the culture with the priceless words and legacies they left behind. And the mainstream narrative points to them as two polarizing figures on opposite ends of the spectrum. However, contrary to popular belief, MLK and Malcolm X shared more than just the common goal of liberating black people. They were both also outspoken critics of white liberals who they felt hurt the fight for the freedom more than they helped it. 
Here are some of the, their most powerful quotes on the subject. Here's the first one. MLK says on white liberals, First, I must confess that over the past few years, I've been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro, Negro's great stumbling block in this stride f- toward freedom is not the white citizen counselor or the Ku Klux Klan, but the white moderate who's more devoted. So, so moderate, I think, I think Malcolm, MLK, he uses moderate to mean liberal. That's the way I'm reading this, the, his uh, statement. So moderate for him means yeah. liberal. Yeah. Right, and then they've gone way past that. You know? Right, exactly. So, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mythical concept of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. And, you know, just remember, it was the the liberals who who uh, advocated for blacks to not be able to vote. So, I mean, and it was a li- it was the liberals basically who enslaved and, them. It was the liberals who started the Ku Klux Klan. Yep. It was the liberals who wanted to secede from the union. It was the liberals who wanted segregation of blacks. Yeah, Ruben. All those things. Liber- yeah, liberalism is a, uh, it's, it destroys everything it touches. Yeah. We're going to fin- come back to this article when we come back. Don't want to miss it. Sirach 1124 says, Do not say I am self-sufficient. What harm can come to me now? According to St. Catherine of Siena, presumption is like vermin burrowing at the root of the tree of our soul. If we do not uproot it with great care and humility, it will eventually destroy the soul. May God keep us from all presumption of mind and heart and realize that we depend on Him for everything. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before, at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the key word pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-Life Across America. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888 526 2151. Jesus 911, we're back. We're talking about liberalism and um, what does the church say about it? And, and what, what did MLK and Malcolm X say about it? Uh, be, it's surprising to, to see this. And um, let me just finish up this last quote. Um, yeah, you f- finish up MLK, and I'll I'll uh, quote Malcolm X. Okay. So um, he believes 
he goes, I cannot agree with the, your methods of, of direct action is what he's, he's quoting the, the liberals as saying, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mythical concept of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Uh, lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. And that was from a letter from a, a Birmingham jail in 1963. Um, the majority of white Americans, this is another quote, uh, consider themselves sincerely committed to justice for the Negroes. They believe that American society is essentially hospitable to fair play and to steady growth toward a middle-class utopia embodying racial harmony. But unfortunately, this is a fantasy of self-deception and comfortable vanity. And that's from Three Evils of Society in 1967. And uh, his last quote was, It is not enough for me to stand before you tonight and condemn riots. It would be morally irresponsible for me to do that without at the same time condemning the contingent, intolerable conditions that exist in our society. A riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last 12 or 15 years. It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that, that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice and humanity. That's from his uh, work, The Other America, 1968, sh- you know, shortly before his assassination. Ruben, what what uh, MLK, Doctor uh, Reverend Martin Luther King, I like to call him by his Baptist title better than his uh, academic title. Reverend Martin Luther King, a Protestant minister, he's railing against the Jim Crow laws. That's what he's really that were put in by the Democrat Party. Everything that you just read there, he's he's the backdrop to what he's talking about is the Jim Crow laws that made the Negro a second-class citizen in all things. This is what he... And Reverend Martin Luther King, he was more tempered when he spoke about white liberals because he called them white moderates. Mm -hmm. But uh, Malcolm X, Ruben, he wasn't as tempered. Yeah. Yeah. Just remind the audience that MLK, by the way, was a Republican, so uh, don't forget that. That's right. Yep. And and his brother and his father as well. Mm -hmm. So Malcolm X who initially joined the black Muslim movement. Then he went over to the Middle East and he saw true Islam and he became a Sunni Muslim. And then, so he left black Islam and he was eventually killed by th- two or three black Muslims. He was shot, uh, you know, again, black on black crime that we're, we're always, you know, that nobody wants to talk about. But here's what Malcolm X said about white liberals. He didn't call them moderates. He says white liberals. He says this, quote, The white liberal is the worst enemy to America and the worst enemy to the black man. Let me explain what I mean by the white liberal. The white liberal aren't white people who are for independence, who are moral and ethical in their thinking. They are just a faction of white people that are jockeying for power. The same as a white conservative is a faction of white people that are jockeying for power. The worst enemy that the Negro has have is this white man that runs around drooling at 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 the mouth professing to love negroes and calling himself a liberal sounds like he's describing joe biden here ruben yep and it is following these white liberals that has perpetuated problems that that negroes have if the negro wasn't taken tricked or deceived by the white liberal then negroes would get together and solve our own problems i only cite these things to show you that in america the history of the white liberal has been nothing but a series of trickery designed to make Negroes think that the white liberal was going to solve our problems. Our problems will never be solved by the white man. Malcolm X continues. He says, the white conservatives aren't friends of the Negro either, but at least they don't try to hide it. They are like wolves. They show their teeth in a snarl that keeps the Negro always aware of where he stands with them. But the white liberals are foxes who also show their teeth to the Negro but pretend they are smiling. The white liberals are more dangerous than the conservatives. They lure the Negro, and as the Negro runs for the growling wolf, he flees into the open jaws of the smiling fox. One is the wolf, 
the other is a fox, no matter what they'll both eat you. Now, I disagree with him in one instance, well, in a lot of areas, but here's where he's wrong, Malcolm X. He's wrong about the white conservative. <laughs> Why? Because it was the white conservative that abolished slavery. He seems to forget that. <clears throat> Lincoln, to, to be specific. And uh, it's another white conservative by the name of Donald J. Trump who's been the best friend of the black community outside of Abraham Lincoln in all matters. And so uh, I would just take issue with uh, his, uh, his saying that the white conservatives are also their enemies. Yeah, you know, just the um, back in the 60s, uh, 64, I believe it was, where President Johnson, Lyndon B. Johnson, you know, they, uh, they, they, they came up with this war on poverty, and then that's where they started... Uh, the, that's basically where welfare was started. And mm-hmm. uh, we know that th- that has caused m- more harm to the inner cities than, than uh, you know, than, than what you could do. Just there's other programs they could have done, but what they did is they made them, uh, uh, re- they the, made them beholden Ruben they, they to the have, government. They have, that's what exactly. they did. They, that's right. They, they have to, they rely on that. And then now, uh, I mean, I used to see in the streets, Jess, I, I would talk to, you know, uh, girls that I I come up up on the street in hotel room motel rooms. You know, and what are you doing out here? You know, where are your children? You know, and uh, well, my my mom's raising them, and 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 they they would look to every child as 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 income every time, and they'd have three, four, five kids, and and they were on the streets running the streets, and they were saying, well, I get I get five hundred dollars for each child, you know. And and they're taking that money. Very little of it is going to their mom, to who's raising them, and and it was, it was so sad to see that. That's how they looked at. Um, if I just get and have another kid, that's another five hundred dollars. Wow! You know, unbelievable. It was a, it was really an eye opener, and uh, that didn't do the uh, you know the blacks any good. I mean, it, it might have fed them for a day, but when you saw when you saw what happened over the years. You know, um, even though uh, ec- economist Thomas Sowell said he, he criticized the war on poverty's programs, writing the black family, which had survived centuries of slavery and discrimination, began rapidly disintegrating in the liberal welfare state that subsidized right. unwed pregnancy it. and changed welfare from an emergency rescue to a way of life. And, um, you know, and others took different tact in 67 in his book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community, Martin Luther King criticized Johnson's war on poverty for being too piecemeal saying that programs created under the war and poverty such as housing programs job training and family counseling all had a fatal disadvantage because the programs have never proceeded on a coordinated basis and noted that at no time has a total coordinated and fully adequate program been conceived so in his speech at uh, in riverside church in new york new york city before his assassination he, he he spoke about those things but he connected the war on vietnam with the war on poverty and basically you know we spent so much money in vietnam he's saying that you know, uh, w- we could have put that money into the uh, into programs that, that would have helped the uh, the blacks. So that's that's right, Ruben. And I'll tell you what welfare does. Let's just be honest; it rewards laziness. Absolutely, it does. And it's 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 like a, it's like marijuana. It's a dis it's di- it's a disincentive. Uh, mm-hmm. What it does is just kill somebody's desire to try to better themselves. And also what the welfare system has done, it's affected the blacks horribly. It, it's uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, who basically, you know, the welfare bills were started by Lyndon B. Johnson. And he probably meant well. He wanted to help widows and young children, I'm guessing. But when the liberals are in charge, what happens to welfare, it balloons into a big spending monster. And you could see all the evidence shows that that marriage, mom and dad at home, is the best remedy for poverty, right. for health care, for domestic, you know, to get, for to eradicate domestic violence and child abuse, and to you know stop high school dropouts. These federal welfare programs, they actually discriminate against marriage because they they give handouts, taxpayer handouts, to people. You can't be married. Mm-hmm. In other words, oh, if yeah. you have a husband, your welfare check's going to get cut. So substantially, if not entirely, and this isn't an accident, Ruben. This is the the central part of the Democrat political strategy strategy from Lyndon B. Johnson that's produced 
70% of unmarried women amongst the black community. Yeah. It's because it's, it's the incentive is not to get married. The incentive is, yeah, just have babies right. and each one, of them ha- each one of them has a price tag on it. Mm-hmm. And so the welfare system, have you seen even in East L.A., what's it done? It's created a bunch of irresponsible men. Okay, that's where you got that, that phrase, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> uh, it, and, and, and also it's created in the barrios and in the ghettos a matriarchy. What do I mean by that? Millions of homes where children don't have a dad at home, Mm -hmm. they just have a mom there. And is it a wonder that, again, the illegitimate birth rates, they're soaring, and unmarried mothers right now give out of four out of every 10 births born in the U.S., and it's rising, uh, is, is to unwed mothers. And again, it used to be that the husband was responsible for the financial support of his wife and children, but with the welfare that's been rolled in by Lyndon B. Johnson and the Democrat machine. Mm -hmm. Now, big brother government replaces uh, husbands. That's true. You know, and that uh, the IRS is saying that uh, what the pro this, this program, um, it, it, they throw 56 billion a year in cash grants to low income persons. But the, the IRS is saying that quarter to a third of all, uh, EITC claims are fraudulent. It would be hard, not hard to, to, it would not be hard to sharply reduce fraud. Um, uh, you know, so if they could, they could save about 10 to 15 billion per year if they cleaned up the fraud, because, uh, you know, when people are getting married, they're, they, they just, they don't want that money to end. So, uh, many times it's just, they just shack up. They're not going to put it on paper so that there's no, uh, you know, they can't follow the trail and, they can still continue to get their to get their money, but they're uh, constantly there's fraud going on all over the place and in, in, in this and so it's it's not helping the black community w- uh, one bit. So, Ruben, and and here's why I believe the Democrats are so behind the welfare system because they know that if they flood, uh, if they flood society with welfare, it's going to collapse society. It's called the Cloward Piven method. If you flood society with welfare, you're going to create a crisis. Government's going to have to step in. And the end game is socialism. Government control of everything. That's right. You're listening to Jesus 911 two-man car, Jess and Ruben, where we were talking about liberalism. It's, uh, it's deadly politically and religiously as well. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Jesse Romero from the Terry and Jesse Show, also from Jesus 911. Let's face it, we all need to use the internet, but we need screen accountability. Why? Pornography is a huge problem, especially on the internet. And every time we tap into the internet, we get bombarded with images and temptations that degrade our humanity. So we need Covenant Eye to block these pornographic sites and advertisements from infiltrating our lives. Covenant Eyes helps us take custody of our eyes and custody of our intellect. So I recommend you go to CovenantEyes.com and type in the promo code, the NPR, to support the network. Protect yourself and your family from the eminent threats on the internet. www.CovenantEyes.com Code VMPR Live Porn Free. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the faith. If you shop on Amazon.com, there's an easy way to support Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Just visit smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center under the desired charity. Now, when you log into your Amazon account and purchase products, a portion of it will automatically go to support Virgin Most Powerful Radio at no cost to you. Thanks in advance for supporting CRC and VMPR, and may God richly bless you and your family.
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911. Oh, these guys are on the chat are, are making me laugh. They're, we're talking about my my shirt. They're calling it a soprano shirt, a Bachuco <laughs> shirt. I, <laughs> come on, guys. It, it's actually just uh, it's actually it's uh, it says LASD soccer on it here. <laughs> All right, man. All right, Ruben. Let, let me go back again. The strategy of of uh, what welfare is all about. There was two professors from Columbia University, Professor Cloward and Piven, and they came up with a strategy. They were sociologists. They were political activists, political scientists, and uh, they created a political strategy back in 1966. And the idea was overload the U.S. public welfare system, and you create a crisis where you're going to have to replace the welfare system with a socialist system of guaranteed annual income, and this way you could end poverty. This is exactly what we're seeing in our country right now. We're seeing the Democrat Party using the cloward Piven strategy. And, and uh, when you look at the history of even a lot of these uh, Democrat presidents, uh, these, guys, these guys were openly racist, Nothing's changed. Let me quote to you Woodrow Wilson, <laughs> President Woodrow Wilson, Democrat. He said, the white men were roused by a mere instinct of self-preservation until at last there had sprung into existence a great Ku Klux Klan, a veritable empire of the South to pr- protect the Southern country. Look at President Harry. Tr- so he's a. Woodrow Wilson was totally happy and, and with, the, with the, the work of the Ku Klux Klan, by the way, which came from a de- the Democrat Party. President Harry Truman, Democrat, said this, uh, I think one man is just as good as another as long as he's not a N, <laughs> N, uh, blank, 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 or a Chinaman. Okay, He said the N-word. Mm. This is a president. Okay, I'll re- I think one man is just as good as another so long as, he, as he's not a N-word or a Chinaman. This is a Democrat president. Here's another one. This is going to shock you. Now, this is the one, uh, President Lyndon Johnson, this is the one that gave us the great society and, and welfare. <laughs> Look what he said. He said, because of, the, because of the great society and welfare, all have those n-word voting democratic for the next 200 years close quote mm. yeah you get- so lyndon b johnson said i'm gonna get and he said it, the n-word what because of this welfare i'm gonna lock him into the democrat party for the next 200 years yeah you know <laughs> um you know what's resurfaced too jesse is uh in during this uh, presidential campaign is uh, Joe Biden's um, his eulogy of the late Senator Robert Byrd, a former Ku Klux Klan leader, who's who's it's resurfaced, and um, you know he's giving a eulogy, and there's this 35 second clip that comes along, and you can you can see it for yourself if you just look it up. Oh, we should have put the clip on, but it's okay. Yeah, and you know it's it's uh, you know this guy was a full on uh, you know sheet wearing Ku Klux Klan <laughs> member. I mean. And and, and, Hillary, and a Democrat senator uh, right. later, later on in life. And yeah. Hillary, um, you know, she, she touted him too, and it was uh, this guy was like the best thing than sliced bread, according to them, you know. And he's, you know, they were they were eulogizing him, and, and um, they were saying that he was high, held in high esteem. And could you imagine if Trump di- had done that and had gone to one of these KKK, uh, <laughs> you know, David Duke's funeral or something? They would lambaste him, but he gets a pass on this, so nobody knows about it except for the conservatives. And uh, it's amazing. Oh, this is 
this is the, incredible. He was senator. Uh, but, this guy was a senator from yeah from West Robert Virginia. Byrd, very yeah. yeah, very well known Democrat senator. Yeah, Ruben. Uh, again, what's the real history of the Democrats that a lot of people don't know? The Democrat Party they created the KKK mm-hmm. after the Confederacy's defeat in the Civil War, and it's estimated that about three thousand four hundred and forty six black Republicans and one thousand two hundred ninety seven. White Republicans were lynched by the KKK between 1882 and 1968. And they all looked alike in robes. Mm -hmm. But underneath, they were all Democrats. Then you go to Jim Crow segregation laws in the South. They were created by Democrats. This is what MLK and Malcolm X were railing against. Democrats instituted these Jim Crow laws for what? To overturn Republican civil rights laws for blacks. And also, most just so just a reminder, the Democrats supported the Dred Scott Supreme Court decision that said what? Quote, a Negro whose ancestors were imported into the U.S. and sold as slaves, whether enslaved or free, could not be an American citizen. Close quote. The decision was a 7-2 to two vote that blacks could not be citizens. A 7-2 to two vote. All seven Democrat judges voting in favor of... And the two Republicans were dissenters. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here's one more, Ruben. Uh, immediately after taking office in 1913, President Woodrow Wilson, Democrat, fired most blacks who worked in the federal government and resegregated the Treasury Department, mail service, and the Navy. Here's what he says, Woodrow Wilson, his own words. Segregation is not humiliating, but a benefit and distinctly to the advantage of of the colored people themselves. And what about George Wallace, Democrat in Alabama, who stood in front of the Alabama schoolhouse in 1963, fighting to keep segregation permanent. Ruben, the list goes on and on. But the revisionist history people, uh, Jesse, they they don't want their... They don't learn this in in public schools, Ruben, or in colleges. No, they don't. But now we've come full circle, because I don't know if you've heard, but... Our uh, crazy governor here is just, uh, he signed off on a, uh, to, to start reparations, or they're looking at reparations for blacks here for slavery. Oh, that's California. right. I just read that. Yeah. So, so I don't agree with that. I mean, you know, I agree that, you know, the, the blacks have been maligned, and, and, you know, I don't think, I'm not of the opinion that there's this uh, systemic racism that's still going oh, on. Oh, heck no. Ruben, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you think... Uh, <laughs> 40 or 50, well, no, more than that, more than that, way more. Most of the NBA and NFL are young, rich blacks. Mm-hmm. You think any of them have ever been maligned or oppressed or experienced racism? Are you kidding me? Maybe 10 generations ago in their family line, which I'm sure LeBron James can't even, he can't even name one slave in his family. No. If you, I've seen, they, they ask some of these players, these multimillionaire uh, black athletes, can you tell me one slave in your family? And you know what they all say? Humming a humming a humming a humming a crickets. Yeah. They don't know. LeBron ch- tries to play 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 it off like he's been oppressed. You know, he he was touted in high school as the next prodigy. You know, like next the next uh, you know Michael Jordan. This guy, this guy was dry. His mom was a single parent mom, and he was driving a Hummer in high school. So what does that tell you? That people were putting was, money in oppressed. his pocket. People, oppressed. yeah, he had shoe company <laughs> deals. He's got you know he was. So he probably couldn't have gone to, to college anyway be, because uh, they would have made up that you couldn't be taking money and, and still be eligible in college. So that's that's my point. And he has, you know, like white policemen guarding him. And he's Ugh. he's the one that's, you know, uh, bashing the cops. And I just saw that um, I, I believe it was um, I think it was Bree Bart or, or one of those uh, conservative sites said that the, 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 the game two of the NBA finals was down by 68%. It was the lowest rated uh, viewed game in history, all of history. And what these people, these these crybaby athletes are, are not realizing is that those fat checks aren't going to last forever. If there's no fans and there's no viewership, they're, they're not going to be able to, to receive those multi-million dollar, uh, you know, contracts. They're just cutting their own throat. And this, they're, politicizing the game that you know what what used to be where you could go to the games and root for your team the home team and 
come together and not talk about religion or or, or uh, talk about your politics. You just root for your and it it, it was uniting. This the sports world is uniting now. It, it's disgusting and they're they're throwing the stuff in your face and and shaming you. They're losing a lot of viewership too, Ruben. Uh, like I said, it was sixty eight percent down. Um, I'm glad to see that. Yeah. Well, I'm one of them. I I, I I will not watch the NFL or the NBA for the rest of my life unless things change, mm-hmm. unless they repent for what the, for getting involved in politics. I want to see them for their athletic prowess. Yeah. I don't want to hear their political views because they're not that smart. They yeah. know how to throw balls. They're good, good athletes, but they're not very deep in politics. I would take them to school, every single one of them. <laughs> Who was that uh, commentator on Fox? She just told, she told LeBron, just shut up and dribble the ball. You know, she got... <laughs> She got hammered for that, but uh, we don't. Look, that's we what don't, he's good at. We don't. They're not. They're, they're not steeped in politics, yeah. and they're not steeped in faith either. Yeah, just like you know, just like when the the Rock came out and and endorsed Kamala Harris, Joe Biden. You know, we don't need the. Since when do we, we have to hear from uh, movie stars who they're voting for? <laughs> they're. It's not important, you know. <laughs> so we're not. No, gonna, now if I want to ask the Rock about you know how how to you know get strong pec- pectoral muscles, maybe I'll ask him. But about politics, I'm not going to ask him. Yeah, ask a rock. How come you didn't make it in the NFL, rock? You know, And so there's a lot of jokes yeah. coming out that, you know, you don't want to be like the rock. You don't be, you know, yeah. you know they call a rock as a, someone who's done that a lot upstairs. But Right. Um, anyway. Ruben, here's the, here, let me mention just something about liberalism because that's what we're talking about. Democrats are proud to call themselves liberals or progressives. They, they'll, it's, that's a synonym. It's like saying car and automobile, yeah. liberal, progressive. They want the everything thing. changing in flux. You know? Yeah. And, and they also call themselves left-wingers or they call themselves the party of the left. Here's what's interesting from a biblical standpoint. Hmm. It's interesting to see that every time our Lord Jesus Christ talks in the scriptures about those on the left, yep. like Matthew 25, 31 to 46, he says those on the left will be damned, those on the right are the elect. Those are going to be saved. Every single, even in the Old Testament, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2, it says, A wise man's heart inclines him towards the right, but a, fool, a foolish man's heart towards the left. So in both Testaments, the left is always a sign of damnation. The right is always a sign of salvation. And again, Reuben, I'll just, just be honest. Liberalism is a sin It's been condemned by the magisterium of the church. It's called ecclesiastical liberalism. It is a sin. It has papal condemnation. Yep. When we come back, we're going to be talking about uh, Satan, who loves to take over politicians. You don't want to miss this. Hands-on apologetics, you have entered into Virgin Most Powerful's Apologetics Dojo, where we go wall-to-wall with defending, explaining, sharing the faith. Master apologist, Carlo Broussard. Carlo, welcome to Hands-on Apologetics. Hey, Gary. It's great to be back in the dojo, my friend. Master apologist, Ken Hensley. Welcome to Hands-on Apologetics. Good to see you again, Gary. Good to be with you. Michael Barber, welcome. You have entered into the Virgin Most Powerful's Apologetics Dojo. Gary, thanks for having me on. We are chatting with Master Apologist Carl Keating. Gary, it's great to be back with you. Coming into the dojo is our good friend Steve Ray. Thank you, Gary. Good to be here. Tim Staples, welcome to Hands-On Apologetics. Hey, it's great to be with you, Gary. Thanks for having me on. Join many others in Gary Machuda's Apologetics Dojo. We have some of the best Catholic apologists in the nation. Streaming live weekdays from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific. Hands-on apologetics on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. In Luke 7, Jesus said, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven her because she has been shown great love. According to St. John of the Cross, Christians should always remember that the value of their good works is not based on number and excellence. Their value is based on the love for God that prompts them to do the works. May we always be motivated by true love for God and not worry so much about what we do, but why we do it.
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Uh, Jesse, we're switching gears here. You want to introduce this? Yeah, Ruben. Uh, the devil works uh, upon modern man, upon a- mankind in general, he uses politics. It's one of his most powerful maneuvers. Why? Because you have very powerful individuals, usually men, <clears throat> who are involved in politics. And they have a macro effect on society, on cities, on states, on the world. And so the devil, <clears throat> why would he go after it? Like, for example, some homeless guy. <clears throat> How much of an effect can a homeless guy have? If, you know, the devil you know, just goes after him, he's already got him where he wants him. He's sin of sloth, you know, just basically uh, a malinger. But he likes to go after people that are powerful because they can affect, through politics, they can affect change. And <clears throat> there's an article, It's uh, and it quotes Father Gabriel Amorth. I'm grabbing it right here. It's very short, but, it, but Father Gabriel Amorth essentially says, that the devil uses politics to, uh, you know, to affect his 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 agenda. It's called Satan loves to take over politicians. Ruben, you want to share it? Oh, go ahead, Steph. I got to bring it up. Uh, <clears throat> I oh, okay, you erased it. Got it. Yeah. Famous Italian exorcist Father Gabriel Amorth said, "Everybody's vulnerable to the work of Satan, and the devil and the devil loves to take over those who hold political office." Did you catch that? The devil loves why? Because they can, they have power over countries and states and cities. You know what does one person lay? Just say a janitor. You know, not that there's nothing dishonorable about that. It's a janitor working at a LA Unified Public School District, raising his family. How much of effect does he have? If the, if, if why would the devil try to perfectly possess him? You're not going to get much of a. The devil's not going to get much bang for his buck. The devil's going to get a lot of bang for his buck perfectly possessing people in politics yeah the movers that these these are the earth movers it says evil exists in politics quite often in fact father Amor said rest in peace by the way mm-hmm. he says the devil loves to take over business leaders and those who hold political office hitler and stalin were possessed how do i know because they killed millions of people and the gospel says by their fruits you will know them unfortunately an exorcism on them would not have been enough since they were convinced of what they were doing we can't say it was a possession in the strict sense of the word but rather a total and voluntary acceptance of the suggestions of the devil by the way what father amorth just described there other exorcists call that perfect possession where uh, the the evil person aligns himself entirely with the demon mm, yeah and I'll, and I'll tell you Ruben the the difference, even Joseph Stalin, just to show you how, how wicked and evil this man was, he said this one day, quote, The death of one man is a tragedy. The death of a million is a statistic. Oh, shoot. In other, yeah. Ruben, you know, when somebody gets killed in a neighborhood, the police come, put out yellow tape. <clears throat> There's a police line. Paramedics are rolled out. Everybody comes out. People are crying. They're hugging each other. Mm-hmm. They're taking pictures. They're putting candles. Uh, you know, people are weeping. The death of one person is a tragedy. But Stalin knew if I can do mass killing, it'll desensitize people to the fact because you know you can't put candles and flowers and cry mm-hmm. over millions and millions of people. There's just not enough time in the day or enough tears in your eye ducts for you to do that. So he said the death of millions is a st- is a statistic. Why? Well, I mean that's that's how uh, Mother Teresa could say that. But we allow abortion, you know, then then we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and allow other people to be killed too. It's just what's the difference, you know? You're just killing these innocent babies in the womb. 
it, it, these these liberals, and we're going back to the liberals, that they've allowed this to happen to the tune of 60 million aborted babies. And uh, that's mass killing. I mean, they're going to have to answer for that uh, when it, when the, you know they come to the judgment seat. And um, this this is a, a good explanation. What Father Morth talks about um, how these politicians can be they can be possessed. I'm 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 pretty convinced though myself that, that there's evil. In fact, President Trump had the White House. Um, he, he exercised before he got he got in there. They they yes, he took did. An exercise or exorcist in there, and just you know uh, blessed the um, the room the all the the White House and it's it's true that that evil is is everywhere. And I wouldn't put it past them that uh, that this all these people these GOP candidates have have gotten uh, sick as a result of some curse or some you know incantation or curses uh, right. that they put on. There's there's all these witches and and uh, evil doers that are are praying for their demise, you know, or they're praying obviously to Satan, right? Um, so this is what we're we're up against. This is a, a truly a spiritual battle, and and these politicians are uh, right, you know, in the in the the face of it, and they either sell this, their souls to the devil or they start working for for our Lord. And and if you're interested in, in doing the God's work, then He's going to use you, but. You know, if you're into it for for personal gain and for just promoting it because of it's your party and and for evil, it's, you know, line your own pockets, perhaps. And, and I think that's what's happening. You see these politicians going there, career politicians, and they come out of there multimillionaires. How is that? They're civil <laughs> servants. Is this microphone on? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah Ruben. Uh, Fulton, uh, Venerable Fulton Sheen said, "Here's the difference between a, a bad man and an evil man." And this, and I say this, uh, politicians should just take heed to this. He says a bad man does personal things that are bad. He's a drunk, he masturbates, he cheats on his taxes, cheats on his wife. He does things that are personally bad. But he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a big footprint. Now, he says a wicked man is somebody who's bad personally. He has, in, he, he has you know, he leans towards a life of, of vice but since he has power, he maximizes damage mm. like a businessman, a business leader or a politician. Th- when they become personally evil, when they're personally bad people inside, they haven't, again, just they fall their concupiscence. They can do maximum damage because they have a lot of influence. So those are the people the devil wants to go after and use as his puppets because they have a huge footprint in society versus John Q. Citizen, who works as a janitor for the LA Unified School District, you know, has a couple of kids at home. You know, his wife is raising the kids and, you know, works nine to five and uh, lives in the suburbs and stuff. If he's a bad person, his, the effects of his sinful lifestyle is minimal. But the effects of a politician or a businessman, as Father Moore says, it's large. That's right. Uh, you know, Father Morth, in another one of his articles, he 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 touts uh, Pope John Paul II as as Satan being afraid of him, and um, they said, "Well, why why Pope John Paul II?" And he, he says that um, it's because they the devil and demons are are many, and they have two powers: the ordinary and extraordinary. He says that uh, the so called ordinary power is that of tempting man to distance himself from God and take take him to hell. This action is exercised against all men and women of all places and religions, but extraordinary powers um, used by Satan. Uh, Father Morth explained how the devil acts when he focuses attention more specifically on a person. He categorized the expression of that attention into four types. Diabolical possession, diabolical vexation, like in the case of Padre Pio, who was beaten by the devil. Obsessions which are able to lead a person to desperation and infestation. And when the devil occupies a space at an animal or even an object. And uh, he says that it's such extraordinary occurrences are rare, but on, on the rise, he's particularly worried by the number of young people being affected by Satan through se- sex, seances, and drugs. He never despairs, though. He says, with Jesus Christ and Mary, God has promised us that he will never allow temptations. But um, John Paul II, he proved to be a powerful intercessor because he says uh, they're afraid of him. For two different responses, he says, one, because he disrupted my plans. The devil, in, in one of his, uh, you know, 
um, exorcisms, he tell, asked the devil, and, and he says, because he disrupted my plans, that's why. I think that he was referring to the fall of communism in Russia and Eastern Europe and the collapse of communism. And then he says in another response, because he pulled so many young people from my hands, there are so many young people who, thanks to John Paul II, were converted, perhaps some were already Christian, but not practicing. But then John Paul II, they came back to the practice. He pulled so many young people out of my hands, is what the devil said. Hmm. Ruben, I'll tell you something else that's important here that Father <clears throat> Amorth mentions, is that, uh, especially for us as, as Catholics, if you live in a state of grace, you got nothing to fear. Yes. That, that's, that's an important point. Is, is, don't walk around biting your nails. Oh, no, the devil. No. Uh, obviously, have a he- healthy respect for, uh, for, for evil. And, and how do you ha- have a healthy respect for it? Don't participate in evil. Personally, uh, within, your, you know, within your own interior life, it says in the article, if you live in harmony with God, it is much more difficult for the devil to possess you. Absolutely. And I'll tell you something else that's very scary is that a lot of satanic sects, S-E-C-T-S, and witches are shilling and on the side of Joe Biden and the Democrat Party. That's the fact. There's a burgeoning satanic movement that's trying to affect political change in our country, and they are openly for the Democrat Party, Satanists and witches. Ruben, wrap it up. Yep, that just goes to show you, you know, you got to pick, you you know, yeah. pick what's... Hey, Ruben, I'm out. I got to do another show. You got uh, it. We'll, God bless. God bless you. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, you see who's who's supporting which party, and and that should tell you everything who your friends and who your enemies are, and uh, but remember, uh, we we have the Blessed Virgin Mary on our side. You know, she's the uh, she, she wears combat boots and she's ready to crush the head of Satan. You know, so let's not uh, let's not uh, worry. We we stay close to our mama, and she's going to get us through this, and and also through Saint Joseph Terror Demons. And I've, you know, personally have seen uh, how they work uh, on somebody who is possessed. And it is uh, amazing to see when you call on their names, how the demons tremble and, you know, you start saying, oh, no, not her. Don't call her. And so um, let's pray for our, our, our politicians. Pray for those that, that are in power. Let's pray for our president. Pray for those who, who, who you know, they, they get they get well from the uh, coronavirus and um you know, I have uh, my own beliefs that perhaps maybe they were, um, you know, they're, they're sick as a result of these incantations and, and whatnot. So, uh, you know, we talked a lot about uh, liberalism today. We talked about how, uh, you know, the, uh, the left has, has undermined the, the uh, inner cities, the, the black communities, and not helped them. But they tout themselves as being the, the, the great liberators. I'll tell you what... Um, and then the fact that the devil is going after our politicians. So we've got to keep them in prayer. You know, uh, um, there's, we're still doing the prayers at the cathedral every Sunday. So uh, I'd like to see you out there. And remember, we're still doing our 54-day uh, novena. So we've got to pick it up, ramp up the pace. Okay, it's like uh, you're getting to the finish line. So you need to, to keep going. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for Hands-On Apologetics with Gary Mashuda. Okay, from the Midwest Command Center, we are 10-7 out. God bless. Keep the faith. Love you. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O oh my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.